Hi, welcome to Every Burned Out Kid, a podcast where we talk about what's it like to be a Lasallian amidst the overwhelming challenges of being a college student. I'm Rafi, your resident moderator, and I'll be facilitating this talk. Siguro, let's start uh, by introducing ourselves. Hi, I'm Josie. Happy Friday to our listeners. Uh, yo, I'm Darren. Hello, I'm Pia. Hi, hope you're having a great day. This is Hannah over here. Hi, I'm Sarilia. Hey, gorgeous. I'm Haru. And of course, hello everyone. I'm Reese, and we are 25 Chicken. Alright, so for anything else, let me ask you guys. Kamusta yo? How are you feeling today? Actually, I've been feeling so tired lately. Actually, same. Kasi honestly, I feel so burnt out. Like, grabe. Mapapawaw na lang ako sa mga ginagawa ko this week. It's very difficult to balance all of my commitments. Siyempre, aside from um, the academic works, I also have to fill out my thesis and officer of the organizations. Then I also have to deal with my personal matters, family, and many more. So, ayun, PJ ining siya. Agree with hmm. you too, ano, princess. Because personally, I remember nung grade 11 pa ako. Uh, this is when I first understood and fully uh, grasped yung burnout pa in academics. Hindi niya, sobra na kakadrain and it takes the life out of you. So, <laughs> siyempre, prepared to that nung junior high pa ako, really didn't uh, acknowledge yung being overwhelmed sa academics and more yun nga na nang, nangyayari siya talaga and more often than not been a brush off ko lang siya and continue continue to do my task kasi nga may, as if my choice naman may choice pa ako back then so yun fast forward to college i've had multiple instances uh, especially uh, this recent mid- midterms na everything felt like it was such a rush and we had to finish everything yun yung quizzes yung different papers na kailangan matapos so, yun, sobrang gulat, sobrang overwhelming at the very least kasi hindi naman natin siya ma-avoid. Right, ma-avoid naman natin siya pero hindi naman natin siya talaga ma-prevent at all. That's actually so true. Pero how about you naman, Pia? Have you been feeling the same way too? Well, ako, same goes with you guys. Siyempre, na papago din ako lalo sa akads ka noon. Na, um, na feel ko yung academic burnout talaga nung senior high kasi online lang so parang syempre transition ganun and nanini bago pa ako sa setup but ng ay ayun si nung grade 8 nung grade 12 siguro natutunan ko na mga naka-cope up na ako ngayon. and up until ngayon na hybrid tayo ano siguro na realize ko na it's it's important pa rin na magkaroon ng time for yourself hindi lang puro akad mm. you know i actually resonate with what you guys said Say just like me, I also had um, parang my first burnout experience in grade 11. Kasi una sa lahat, I was um, lumipat ako from uh, BEDA. So, I'm sorry, pero BEDA is medyo nabababaan ako sa standards. And then, sa La Salon, like senior high, so it was a big uh, jump for me. Especially, ayun nga, since very different ang uh, gravity ng workload ng junior high school compared dun sa senior high. So, apart from my ACADs, um, natabunan pa ako ng responsibility sa bahay, sa org ko, and I guess balancing it was very, um, it was tedious for me. Nakapagod, syempre. And, yeah, overall, sa senior high mo talaga parang malalaman, uh, ma-realize na Oh, grabe. We're already adulting. Na unti-unti nang na-foreshadow yung, you know, the harsh realities of this world. Na you really need to work for something in order to reach your goals. So yeah, g- grabe. I guess all, all I can say is that lahat tayo may pinagdadaanan and lahat tayo parang no, or, no overwhelmed with ACADs and ORGs. Basically, our life as college students, no? Hmm, tama ka, Rafi. So, I think medyo may proper time for that, no? And that is academic burnout. Right, right, right everyone? Tama ba? So, um, with that, uh, what else can you say, Rafi, no? Diba? Tama ba ako? 
Well, hmm. academic burnout, I think it's something that we all experience, especially now that we step into a new chapter, which is college. Kasi ito talaga yung um, time na ibibigay talaga natin yung best natin because this is where we get to test our capabilities. This is where we get to um, test kung ready na ba tayo sa real world, kung ready na ba tayo magtrabaho. But yeah, I think um, academic burnout is something that most of us just brush off but it needs to be addressed kasi somehow it takes a toll on our mental health and in the long run hindi siya magiging beneficial for us pero uh, apart from that I just wanna ask how would you guys define academic burnout or would you agree to what I said or yeah, I just wanna hear your thoughts about it I actually agree so I'll pick up where you left off so I think I can go first for me Academic burnout is honestly kapag nahihirapan ka na to cope up with your academic responsibilities when you feel so tired or nawawalan ka na ng motivation no? and as if ayaw mo nalang gumala on all. Because honestly, that's how I feel like mas pipiliin kong humilata na lang sa, mm-hmm. like, sa bed ko or sa sahig just to do, parang not do anything or mas ayaw ko na lang na gumawa ako ng kahit ano kasi sobrang pagod na ako and nawawala na ako ng dedication and motivation to do anything. So, for me, that's that's really um, academic burnout. How about you? Um, I think agree din ako din. Pero, feel ko hindi lang sa nahihirapan. Parang meron din sa mental natin. Parang yung pessimistic thinking o yung negative thinking natin. Kasi, for example, in simple task, parang we always expect the bad things to happen. Like, for quizzes, presentations, simple past activities. At pag nag-pile up yun, parang no-overwhelm tayo ng anxiety natin. Hmm. Oh, yeah, information, the information block ata ako sa dami ng scenario. But I'm really curious, what causes academic burnout ba? That's a very good question, no? Pero, ayun nga, siguro for me, what causes academic burnout is accepting a lot of workload na alam mong hindi mo kaya or sometimes itong workload na to is beyond our control na uh, sometimes um, we don't get to choose our workload and so ayun there are tendencies na we tend to have these types of burnouts especially when we try to um, push above and beyond but yeah does, does anyone else want to share their thoughts about it or so I think I agree with you Rafi um siguro nangyayari din siya no because uh, we become too focused on our responsibilities and parang we don't give ourselves time anymore so like we mm-hmm. prioritize so much and you know our student responsibilities our office responsibilities when it comes to the orgs that we forget yeah. to give ourselves you know time to eat or even rest up or you know just take care of ourselves generally also, and siguro na rin, because of the pressure that's on our plate, like, we wouldn't want to disappoint anyone, so we tend to set unrealistic goals for ourselves. True. Kasi, and from there, siguro, we have to also push ourselves. To, we push ourselves too much to the point na Mm-mm. where it becomes too much for us physically, mentally, and minsan na rin emotionally. Uh, Ayun, so just like what you guys said, nakakaubo siya talaga. And I think uh, we can all agree na uh, sometimes we tend to be overachievers. So, kasi given our program na competitive and all, we push ourselves beyond what we can what we can and would actually do. And more often than not, it feels uh, exhausting to finish just one task. So, other than that, we have demanding subjects rin with complex tasks yeah. na hindi naman, ma- hindi naman matatapos pag sinimula mo agad. So, Rafi. I agree that I don't know. There's always pressure to um parang akads when it comes to especially sa program natin. And I I think that pressure, that fear, uh, that anxiety na ah baka behind na ako or baka uh hindi mas satisfy yung magulang ko sa ano sa grades na kaya kong ibigay or even myself. Na sometimes we set 
standards for ourselves na parang we get disappointed when we don't get to reach those standards and so we try to strive for the best kahit na minsan hindi na natin kaya but yeah I think there is a way naman for us to solve this problem and uh, siguro for me the best way to recover from academic burnout is to first write down all your accomplishments and current progress tapos si acknowledge mo remember that Uh, whether it may be big or even the smallest thing, those accomplishments will still remain as progress. And that is something that you should be proud of. And I think na, you know, parang we always have to be kinder to ourselves. Na, sabi nga nila, as cliche as it sounds, count your blessings. Now, whenever we're faced with academic burnouts, siguro the best thing that we could do is to just look how far you've come. Look how much you've already achieved. Diba? Parang mapapatanong ka na lang, ano, ngayon pa ba ako titigil? So, yeah, I just think na we should always have this in mind na whenever we think that we're at our lowest, Always, you know, keep in mind that there's always a spur of hope. Now, whenever, whenever you feel like you're breaking, you're actually not, but you're just improving and growing. Oh yeah, okay, but guys, how 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 do you think uh, we be able to get up from burnouts or what? So, um. Ano, ako personally, parang I make sure na may time ako to spend with my friends and my family. Para naman hindi yung oras ko hindi lang nasa akad, hindi lang nasa puro works, ganun. Kasi pagka ganun talaga, mabilis kang mapapagod. So, kapag ka, di ba, kapag ka nag-spend ka ng time with your friends, your family, your loved ones, ganun, may break ka from your responsibility. So, parang may breather ka, hindi mo, hindi mo, hindi ka na pressure to do something ganun. Parang mag start ka sa hectic schedules mo. So, syempre, pero syempre, let's make sure na tapos na rin yung responsibilities natin bago tayo gumawa, ay, mag, mag have fun or mag spend ng leisure time, ganun. Mm-hmm. So, I know, guess I guess one thing that I've learned from this is that We shouldn't feel guilty for wanting to take a break from time to time. Kasi syempre, kailangan natin to. As much as we want to achieve all those things that we want for ourselves, for our families, even for society, we need to acknowledge that we have our limits. And we also need to rest. No? I agree. It's a bit sad, but we really do tend to take on more projects than we're capable of. And whether this is because we want to prove something to ourselves or because we have no choice, it's normal to feel tired from time to time. Mm-hmm. I agree. I think that while it's not ideal to feel so tired all the time, as you have to prioritize ourselves, Um, that feeling shouldn't be something to be ashamed of. And alam nyo guys, one thing I realize is, is that sometimes you have to make sacrifices. Kahit di na natin gusto, because at the end of the day, if sobra na yung ginagawa natin, tendency lang is nahihirapan tayo and nakakasakal siya. But as much as possible, dapat we do things in a more fruitful and fun way. That's why for me, it's very important to have a solid group of friends. Mm-hmm. I agree. Uh, yun nga, kasi so given nga yung workload natin ngayon, so buti nga ano, uh, at this time and age, yung para pagiging pag, nubo, pag na-overwork tayo at this yung uh, kailangan natin magpahinga. Parang usually nabavalue nav- yung dapat i-prioritize natin yung well-being natin. May it be uh, physically or mentally. Kasi parang naging norm na siya na being tired and uh, breathing from the uh, from our academic struggles na in-enter natin is something that we should do kasi hindi uh, I think it would also consume us kasi 
yung capacity yung capacity lang natin na we could only take so much ba kaya mm-hmm. so yun yeah given these uh what you guys said uh maybe we could relate or i mean Tila salient per value of reserve. So, should we tell our listeners what it means to practice uh, yun, yung value of reserve muna? Um, okay, so, um, for our listeners who aren't familiar with the value of reserve, it's about being able to remain calm during times of stress, tension, and crisis. So um, aside from that, it also, it's also someone who shows the value of reserve, who is cool, calm, and collected. So basically, super chill sila, and they're usually very good people to rely on as they can go around you in times of stress. You know? Mm-hmm. Pero, why is it important to practice the value of reserve? Well, for my side, this value is of great importance as it enables us students to maintain our serenity during hard times that are for sure inevitable at times. And if I may add, if... Sorry, I'll cut that out. And if I may add, it's also so that other people and the society as a whole can influence how you should be. So, sure, the value of zeal is important. As students, we always try to go beyond the box and to reach new heights of excellence. And we do all this to constantly better ourselves academically and personally. However, it is important to put yourself and your well-being first before everything else. Um, we also have to think of about humility because syempre you know we always chase the high of academic excellence and validation but we have to remain true to ourselves no matter what we achieve siguro apart from ano no apart from um reserve siguro one virtue that we can learn from these academic burnouts is the lasallian virtue of patience So to enlighten you guys, patience is uh, parang it's like being a person who models interpersonal intelligence and builds construction constructive relationships with the eyes of faith. So like, kahit na sobrang nihirapan ka na with uh, your situation right now, you're still able to parang um, create or build uh, constructive relationships and incorporate ko naren sa sa faith, no? na tuwing napapagod na ako, saan nga ba tayo hugot ng lakas? So I guess, at our most vulnerable times when we feel like everything is pressed against us, we can communicate with God. Pwede na lang siya lapitan, we can ask for His guidance. Whenever we feel lost, whenever we feel like nothing's going on our way, whenever we feel like sobrang ang gulo na ng lahat, and everything's overwhelming I guess uh, yeah we can practice the value of faith through reconnecting with God at our hardest times and yeah I think it, uh, this was a very insightful conversation as many good points were shared siguro let's keep what we have learned in mind and uh, moving forward so We may still perform at a rate that will allow us to achieve our goals without sacrificing our state of mind. So, kayo ba guys? Any last remarks before we sign off? Remember to ask for help when you need it. Don't be afraid to ask for guidance from your friends, family, and teachers. Yeah, tama. Kasi they all want the best for you. And they are always willing to help you achieve your goals. So you can come to them for academic advice, share your ask questions, friends that you may you might have, or just for comfort. Because so there's so there's so much that you could actually endure and take. Also, there's no shame in asking for help, and it doesn't make us any less or vulnerable. Yeah, and also, um, a good circle of friends can help you remain at peace. So, share your friends, ano, like-minded kayo, so. Yung burden na pag nagwo-work kayo towards mm-hmm. something hard, 
malalesen. So, mag, 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 yung feeling nyo mag, maglalight and when you're sharing it with people you love and sharing it with people who understand you. I agree with you, no? Na parang ang laking tulong talaga when you feel like you're not alone in this battle. When you feel like hindi lang ikaw yung nihirapan dito. And it feels good na you, ha- you guys have friends who can help you along the way who will help you build yourself up rather than, you know, pull yourselves down. So, yeah. Um, siguro, my advice to all the listeners out there is to be, be more kind to yourself. It helps. And uh, I think we should end today's episode right there. Thank you guys for listening and make sure to come back next week for another episode of Every Burned Out Kid. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Thank you.